The Lord led his people in hope while the sea engulfed their foes. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, as we come to this morning, uh, happy Easter. Almost forgot. As we continue uh, through this Easter octave, we call to mind the goodness of the Lord, his presence in our lives, the new life that he desires for us, uh, no matter what we encounter in our own lives, even our own sinfulness. And so we bring before him uh, our lives, uh, our hearts, uh, and our, our sins and our feelings as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, Lord God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated in the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who gave us the Paschal mystery and the covenant you established, for reconciling the human race. So dispose our minds, we pray, that what we celebrate by professing the faith, we may express in deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After the crippled man had been cured, while Peter and John were still speaking to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple guard, and the Sadducees confronted them, disturbed that they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They laid hands on Peter and John and put them in custody until the next day, since it was already evening. But many of those who heard the word came to believe, and the number of men grew to about 5,000. On the next day, their leaders, elders, and scribes were assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly class. They brought them into their presence and questioned them, by what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, answered them, leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely, by what means he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, who you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. 
The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his mercy endures forever. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is, a, it is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. O Lord, grant salvation. O Lord, grant prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Christians, to the Paschal victim, offer your thankful praises. A lamb the sheep redeems. Christ, who only is sinless, reconciles sinners to the Father. Death and life have contended in that combat stupendous. The Prince of Life, who died, reigns immortal. Speak, Mary, declaring what you saw wayfaring. The tomb of Christ, who is living, the glory of Jesus' resurrection. Bright angels attesting, the shroud and napkin resting. Yes, Christ my hope is arisen. To Galilee he goes before you. Christ indeed from death is risen, our new life obtaining. Have mercy, victor king ever reigning. Amen, alleluia. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana and Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two, others of, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said, I am going fishing. They said to him, We also will come with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered him, No. So he said to them, Cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. So they cast it and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad, and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with the fish. When they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore, full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. 
Jesus said to them, Come have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in, the, and in like manner the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. So in our first reading this morning, we have uh, another continuation uh, of this situation Jesus, uh, with um, uh, Simon and John, or Peter and John, healing this crippled man. This is kind of the third day of us uh, exploring the situation. And today, they're dealing with some opposition from the, uh, from the Jewish leadership, uh, just like Jesus uh, had it in his own time. Which, you know, kind of reminds us of that line from, from Scripture, you know, you will be disliked, you will be hated because of me. Um, but nonetheless, uh, live, called to live out uh, the mission in the world. And, you know, Peter and John, you know, witness to the truth, <clears throat> even though they're, they're taken captive uh, by, by the leaders. And they have a rather bold proclamation, you know, in their witness that what happened was because of uh, the name of Jesus, uh, this guy who you rejected. And so maybe a question for us is, in regards to faith, do we see opposition as merely an obstacle, or do we see it as an opportunity, as we kind of see playing out uh, in this gospel story today? Because we're always going to have opposition. Jesus you know, tells us uh, of this. And maybe sometimes we'll have more opposition uh, than other times. But like Peter and John, it didn't just stop them. It allowed them to be witnesses. So what are maybe some of the things that are kind of in opposition you know, in, our, in our lives, in opposition you know, and challenge our faith? Maybe it's the opinions of you know friend, friends and uh, and coworkers, the kind of constant onslaught of uh, of ideas and things we receive on media and social media and uh, and all all kinds of places. You know, a culture, you know, that kind of increasingly increasingly you know, believes religion to kind of be a private, uh, private and, and personal affair, rather than something that is lived out uh, in a real. A uh, real external way. Probably one of the biggest obstacles we have to face is not direct opposition, but apathy and, and indifference, whether that's you know in our own hearts uh, or in the, just the lives of other people. Because in a sense, if you have opposition, you have at least something of an opportunity to have a conversation and and dialogue. But it is hard to dialogue. Um, with people and in situations um, where they just don't really care. So today when we realize the places of opposition uh, in, in our life, in our life of faith, and just invite God into them, bring the Lord into them, and that if we are open, he can transform all of these places in our lives into places of witness, uh, into places uh, of grace uh, and new life. Because he proved there's no obstacle uh, that could ultimately come against our faith. Um, and he proved this through the resurrection when he even conquered uh, the opposition of death itself. Trusting in our Heavenly Father, we bring before him our needs. For all those who have to serve the church, <clears throat> may they be inspired and strengthened 
by the truth of the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. The government leaders may be moved by the Spirit in promoting policies that protect the sanctity of life in all its stages. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who feel lost or overwhelmed by the circumstances of their life, that they may be sustained and strengthened by God's love for them. Let us pray to the Lord. For all, the, for all missionaries uh, throughout the world, those who experience opposition in proclaiming the faith, uh, that they may be strengthened and emboldened uh, by, the, by the presence of Jesus in their life and in their witness, let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died, may in Christ we be raised uh, to, celebrate with, to celebrate with him in glory. Let us pray to the Lord. And for all the personal intentions we hold in our hearts and bring to this Mass. And for Ron DeCaro, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, you know us and you love us, and you desire us to be bold witnesses of your love. We ask you to hear and answer our prayers and petitions. They be in accord with your will, be in your time. For we ask them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness you have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness you received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. <clears throat> Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice in yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Perfect within us, O Lord, we pray, the solemn exchange brought about by these paschal offerings, that we may be drawn from our earthly desires to a longing for the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to lodge you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood 
of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, <clears throat> and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by, by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. <clears throat> In 
Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Jesus said to his disciples, Come and eat. And he took bread and gave it to them. Alleluia. My Jesus, I believe you are present in a most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, the redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God.